Greetings everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So today's topic is Realism and Reality, the Novel and Society in India, Chapter 1, From Pranas to Nutana, a prose by Meenakshi Mukherjee. So before getting into the text, let me tell you something. Those who haven't subscribed, do subscribe. Well, we'll see something about the author. So she's a Sahiti Academy Award winner in 2003 for her books, The Perishable Empire, Essays on Indian Writing in English. She taught English literature and critical theory at several colleges in Patna, Pune, Delhi, and University of Hyderabad. She served as professor of English in the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. And she was also a visiting professor in several universities outside India including the University of Texas at Austin, the University of Chicago, the University of California at Berkeley, Macquarie University, the University of Canberra, and Flinders University. She is the author of Twice Born Fiction, Realism and Reality, Novel and Society in India, and uh, Reading Jane Austen, and uh, had also edited many collections of essays. Themes of postcolonialism, linguistic barriers and translations, demarcations in terms of region, nature, cultural identities and gender, feminist perspectives, and the need of Indianness are her variety of themes explored. Well, so from Puranas to Nutana, factors that shape the emergence of novels in India. So here we could see that Meenakshi Mukherjee deals about the factors that shape the emergence of novels in India. And it was uh, actually during the mid 19th century and uh, the political and social situations of a col col colonized country uh, were the major reasons in shaping the genre varied indigenous and attenuated, I mean, weak narrative traditions of an ancient culture that is surviving through constant mutation, I mean, uh, alteration or changes. So English education, more exposure to Western literature, were also the most important factors that shaped novels in India. And uh, the origin of novel is subject to a complex cultural determinant. The novel's distinct identity as a genre in 18th century Europe is very much different from the epic, the romance or the saga, I mean the earlier narratives. Well, this particular prose piece is divided into four parts. Now let's deal with the first part uh, and it consists of the idea of individualism and the rise of the novel, I mean the new social mobility of novel. Now let's deal with the concept of individualism. So individualism displaces man from his secure traditional niche and to be placed outside the social hierarchy. This concept of individualism is difficult to be applied in the different cultural and historical context of India. And uh, the problem in defining the characteristics of the novel across different cultures is quite obvious. However, a novel is the most flexible and elusive of genres, and it is impossible to restrict through certain definitions or limitations. So now let's see about the pre-novel narratives and their characteristics. And some of the examples are Kadambari, Panchatantra, Arabian Nights, The Tales of Genji, uh, Legends of King Arthur, Decameron, Canterbury Tales. So here we could see that these pre-novel narratives are uh, circular uh, in their narrative structure. Sometimes there's a larger story containing a smaller one or a number of shorter tales put together in a larger thread of a central narrative. And uh, cycles or chain tales, uh, chain tales or visible, I mean, the cycles of medieval tales of heroism could be borrowed from one culture to another. So the tensions of past and present are absent and uh, the usual once upon a time ambience. It deals with unchanging moral truths and facts of life and the uh, characterization is lifelike. Uh, we could also sense heroic representatives of class or of moral values. And 
What do you mean by the exact characteristics of a novel? So the structure of a novel is more or less unified. So all these points are completely in contrast to the pre-novel narratives, right? Uh, you can uh, check with the previous slide. So the tensions of the past and present is inevitable. I mean, the consciousness of time and space. The progression of a novel is linear, unlike the pre-novel narratives. The order of past and present is sometimes reversed in a novel, and it depicts situations on spatial and temporal axis. It employs realism as a mode of sensing concrete human reality. A novel is bound by its geographical and historical connectives. It crosses the cultural frontiers easier, uh, easily than a fable of or uh, allegory. And uh, we could also sense a stylized characterization. Heroic characters are not representative of any class or moral value, but as convincing individuals in the context of a given time and culture. And now let's get into part two. So we could see that Meenakshi Mukherjee has uh, uh, analyzed the educated Indians of the 19th century uh, and she deals with the earlier novels in India. So a new world was available to the 19th century educated Indians. Scott, Dickens and Thackeray presented a society different from India. The society presented in the English novels of British writers were contrary to the traditional and agrarian life of previous generations in India. The unstable cultural backgrounds of the Indians is partially disrupted because of the British rule. So this, this continuity was an important issue. And the early Indian novels were written in urban areas by English educated people. So the Indian readers of the 19th century, they were actually exposed to unfamiliar fictional modes. And a life depicted in English novels were too unfamiliar for 19th century Indian readers. Characters of 19th century English novels led a life of infinite possibilities, whereas the life of a 19th century Indian was politically slavish and submissive, deprived economically with social limitations and restrictions. So this is quite limited when compared to the characters of the Indian novels. Well, uh, now let's uh, get to know about the picaresque tradition in the European novel. And uh, we could also see the main purpose of the picaresque tradition. So the Picaris tradition had liberated the protagonist from the realities of a static society. The protagonist becomes a free agent being able to shape his own destiny. So we could see three early examples of this tradition. The first one being Robinson Crusoe, the second one being Maul Flanders, and the third one, Pamela. So the central character in these novels are found to be an active agent or uh, challenging his or her own fate. The Indian novelist in contrast. Well, so the Indian novelist operated in a tradition bound society. The life of an individual was uh, mapped out by his family or society. Uh, a man's profession or marriage is not his personal affair. So hope you could uh, sense that being an Indian. The rigid hierarchical familial and uh, social structure of 19th century India had no place for individualism at all. The biggest problem of 19th century, uh, century Indian writers was to shuttle between two sets of values. What are those? One conceived by reading an alien English literature and the other one available. That is the real available life in India. So hope you could get the contrast between the two. Well, so now let's see something about O Chandu Menon's Induleka. Uh, in this particular work of art, individualism was treated as a value. The objective of the writer, Chandu Menon, was to write a novel after the English fashion. I quote from the text, I mean from the preface written by the author. And it is evident that no ordinary Malayali lady can fill the role of the heroine in such a story. 
my indaleka is not therefore an ordinary malayali lady so the author himself is proud of his character uh, who crosses the limits of uh, uh, the rules and restrictions laid down by a traditional indian society so here we could see the portrayal of an educated nai woman of malabar and indaleka the novel's educated heroine dramatizes the resistance of a progressive nai woman she refuses to succumb to the oppression of the nambudri and marries madhavan who stands up to the social evils of the period and this one turn, turned out to be the first major novel in malayalam well so uh, here meenakshi mukherjee has also analyzed the man woman relationship and which was one of the staples of the european novel Indian society, bound by extremely restricted, uh, restrictive uh, conventions of marriage, I mean, uh, a restriction and obstacle to the Indian right. So, a girl was married off before puberty. This was a condition of uh, older India. Marriage was a social institution and exactly not an act of individual choice. So, there was little scope for uh, romantic premarital love. as depicted in english novels so this was actually a uh, challenge for an indian novelist only historical romances in indigenous setting could be depicted and the demands of a social order were higher in ancient and medieval india free love between man and woman was very much preserved in poetry or even carved on stone but not exactly uh, could be expressed in novel so example of this conflict between accepted social norms and the rebellious passion uh, was an example of uh, the novels of bankim chandra chatterjee right so now comes part 3 so here we could uh, see how mukherjee deals with uh, uh, novels at an earlier era in india because at a time when the word novel wasn't used anymore so here we could see the beginnings of a new literary form in india the word upanyas was uh, used currently uh, is used currently in many north indian languages as a meaning for novel but the word upanyas was first used in the year 1862 in bengali by buddev mukhopadhyay as he named a volume of his tale set in the past as Aitiba Sik Upanya. Sorry for my pronunciation. I don't know Bengali, right? So it was a historical fiction, and uh, Budhay tried to coin a term for a new category of story. The term Upanyas was well established in Bengali. The term was uh, used for a novel in Marathi was Kadambari, right? So Kadambari uh, was the term used for novel, and a novelist was called as Kadambari Kar. so a novel in urdu is called a novel a happy choice and the gujarati term for a novel is novel katha and tamil and malayalam adopt, adopted the english term itself well and good so the early telugu novels were called as vachana prabandha a loose translation of which could be prose fiction so these were the earlier terms used for novel in india so here we could uh, see a list of english writers often translated in india so the first one being uh, wilkie collins and the next one disraeli reynolds and uh, these were among the victorian writers and uh, there comes another bunch of writers like bunyan johnson and goldsmith among the older writers well so Here Mukherjee uh, paints a kaleidoscopic fictional scene of the 19th century India. So it was not easy to impose any pattern for novel in India. The novel did not develop at the same pace in every language. Everywhere it was different. Trading centers at Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras had an earlier and greater exposure to Western ways of life, and. Uh, differences in literary trends in different languages were inevitable right a sudden spurt or rush of long narrative fiction in many indian languages in the second half of the 19th century was obviously witnessed upanyas kadambari novel katha or novel were different strands of narratives in different uh, regions well so now comes part 4 the concluding section 
So here, in the concluding section of this particular prose, Mukherjee poses the difficulties faced by the 19th century Indian novelist to adapt to an imported form to suit indigenous requirements. So that was indeed a great, the greatest challenges of uh, an Indian novelist, I'd say. So the late emergence of uh, prose literature was one of the reasons and the development of uh, prose in many regions uh, happened at the initiative of the Christian missionaries, said the Bengali writer Pramata Chaudhary, uh, because uh, they set up printing presses to produce material in regional languages. And uh, earlier prose was in the form of letters in Bengali, and uh, the first Bengali novels emerged in the 1850s. And Marathi novels evolved in the mid 19th century. And it was actually an experimentation to test a literary tradition alien to the Indian literary expression. So, colonial situation uh, was one of the reasons because uh, there was superiority of everything published in English, right? And, take, and it was taken for granted. The 19th century Indian novelist had the British Victorian novels as the model. So basic incompatibilities between the English and the Indian temperaments uh, were uh, uh, one of the challenges. And novel in India under the English tutelage soon began to acquire its own distinct character. Mukherjee states that before attempting any definition for the Indian novel, it is high time to examine the synthesis uh, of a borrowed literary form and indigenous aesthetic. So the cultural expectation also have to be examined to know the mutation in the process of synthesis, right? So now comes uh, the end of the presentation. Hope you'd have uh, uh, liked the video. Uh, thank you for your patience. And those who haven't subscribed it, do subscribe. If you really like the presentation, do like it and share your uh, comments below. And this is Wahida signing off. Thank you.